Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here. And today we're going to take photo restoration backwards. That's right, we're going to start with a modern photo and we're going to learn how to create a vintage look. Give it a little bit of age and weathering and create this effect within Photoshop CC. Now I'm going to start here in Lightroom and I'm going to take my original image and I'm simply going to right click it and I'm going to go under the Edit In selection and I'm going to drop all the way to the bottom and I'm going to open as Smart Object in Photoshop. Once this image is opened in Photoshop, we can see that it is a Smart Object, in fact, by the icon here in the Layers panel. Because it's a Smart Object, we can double click here on the Layer thumbnail at any time and bring up the Camera Raw dialog box and have access to our original raw data. I'll cancel out of this for now. And I'll show you another way to do this. If you're not using Lightroom and you're simply using Photoshop, you can go right from Bridge or from the Explorer or Finder window and open up your RAW file by double clicking. This once again will open this image within Camera Raw into Photoshop, giving you a chance to make your adjustments before you open the image. However, if we click on Open Image, we're simply going to get a rasterized layer in Photoshop. However, if you hold the Shift key down, notice that this button selection changes to Open Object. And if we click Open Object, that will open this RAW file as a smart object within Photoshop, and we'll get the same effect. I'll cancel out of this and we'll go back to Photoshop where I already have my smart object. Now in creating a vintage image, there are a few things we need to consider. The cameras of days gone by were not as mechanically perfect as today's cameras. So we're going to have to create some imperfections in our image and we'll use a little bit of blurring to do that. Secondly, most old images were printed on paper and that paper had a sort of a yellowish tint to it, a sepia tone if you will, and we'll see how to create that. And finally, old images are weathered, they're tattered, they've been in boxes for a long time, or stuck in frames, and we're going to learn how to create a weathered effect. We'll start with the blur. And because I've got a smart object here, I'm going to use the blur gallery that's found under the filter menu here. And when I choose blur gallery, I want to choose iris blur. Now iris blur creates a selective blur with a fall off area. And this circular outline dictates where the fall off is going to be. So anything outside of the outer circle is going to be completely blurred and the distance between these inner dots and the outer circle is where the fall off occurs. I'll leave a little bit of fall off and I'm going to adjust this circular area so that it roughly matches the size and shape of this train conductor's face and upper body. Then I'll dial in the blur amount, which I can do all the way over here in the blur panel, or I can do it right here on the image simply by spinning this dial. And notice as I spin this up, we get a tremendous amount of blur around the outer edges of the image, but the center remains sharp. And I can position this around however I like. Now that's a little bit too much. I'm going to back off of that and leave it right about there. I think that's pretty good. I can adjust the angle and the size of this blur area as I see fit. And once I've got it the way that I like it, I can simply go to the top here and click OK in the toolbar. The blur filter runs, and if we look here in the Layers panel, we can see that indeed the Blur Gallery is applied as a smart filter, which means I can double-click Blur Gallery here anytime and go right back into the Blur parameters and change the blur. I also have a layer mask here, so I can click on this mask and paint with black to hide or white to reveal. So I can choose the brush tool, for example, set to a black color in the foreground, and I can paint over part of the blurry areas to hide the blur effect if I want to bring out some more detail in certain areas. For example, right here on his name tag, I can bring back just a little bit of detail and notice that I'm painting with a very low opacity. So it takes multiple passes to build up a color. Now I think that's pretty good. We've created some irregular 
blurry areas to this image and that is what you might typically see in an old-time camera. Now the next thing that we're going to work on is the tone. We're going to want to lower the contrast a little bit and we're going to want to give it a sort of a yellowish washed out look and that will create that vintage look. Now there are a number of ways that you can do that. I'm going to show you two ways. Both of them are non-destructive. I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers panel and I'm going to click this icon and the first thing I'm going to try is a hue saturation layer. With hue and saturation active I can click on colorize and that will add a color tint to the image. Now what I want to do is change the hue here so that I'm somewhere in the 30 to maybe 40, 45 range. It gives me that yellowish gold color and that's characteristic of a sepia tone. Now I might want to back the saturation down a little bit and so I'll dial it down in this case to about 19 or 20 and I can adjust the lightness to really make the image appear more washed out by adding more light or darken it down to the left by decreasing the lightness. In this case I'm going to wash it out just a little bit. In fact we might want to dial the tone in even a little bit more so we can add another adjustment layer. I'll go back to the bottom of the layers panel and in this case I'll add a curves adjustment layer. Now with the curves adjustment layer we're simply going to make two simple changes here. I'm going to click right here in the lower quadrant on the left hand side and drag upward just a little bit and then I'll find the corresponding point in the upper right corner and drag downward a little bit and that is going to reduce the contrast. If I turn this layer off and on you can see what I've done. I've faded it out. I've given it a bit of a washed out look and again that's something you'll see in a vintage photograph. Now there's one other technique that I want to show you that I like a lot and so I'm going to turn off these layers and I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and in this case I'm going to add a gradient map. When I do this the default black to white gradient is applied to the image but we're going to change this. If we open up the gradient picker you'll probably see these default gradients but we can change these. Click on the little gear icon and then scroll down and you can see a number of different gradient sets that are available and I'm going to choose photographic toning. I'll click OK to replace the default set with the photographic toning set and here we have a variety of interesting gradients. If we close this down and click right on the gradient ramp you'll get the gradient editor and here we can see the name of the gradients and you can scroll through these, click through them and try these different gradients and see which ones you like but there are a few that I like better than the others for this type of effect. I like the sepia selenium series and here I prefer sepia selenium 3 for this effect. I'll click OK and we've got our gradient map adjustment layer. I'll go ahead and re-enable the curves layer and we could dial this in if we want and readjust to either decrease or increase the contrast but I think that's looking pretty good. Now there's one last thing that we want to do and that's to give our photo that weathered and aged look and we're going to use a texture to do that. Now you can find good textures all over the place. I've got some that I've chosen here and I'm going to simply open up one of these in Bridge and I'll bring it into Photoshop. Now I'll switch to the Move tool and I'll simply drag this image onto my photograph and I'll hold the Shift key to center it. When I let go it's dropped in and I'll use Control T or Command T on a Mac to transform this and I'll switch this around to a vertical orientation. I'm also going to hold the Alt or Option key and drag inwards to resize this down to the size of my photo so that I get these interesting aberrations around the edges. The great thing about using textures like this is you can shrink or expand them to your heart's content and it really doesn't matter because you're simply adding some visual interest to the image. I'll go ahead and accept this transform and now I'm going to want to desaturate this. So I'm going to press Control shift u or Command shift u on a Mac and that's going to desaturate the image. Then I'll come over to the Layers panel and I'll switch my blend mode for this layer from Normal to something like Overlay. I can experiment with different blend modes, soft light, hard light, vivid light. Some of these are a little bit over the top, 
but you get the idea. I think soft light actually looks pretty good. And then we're going to dial the opacity down a little bit. So we want to get just a hint of that texture, not too much. Finally, we can go back and tweak this. And I think we need to adjust the curves to lighten the image up a little bit. So I'll raise up the shadows just a bit. Maybe raise up the highlights a little bit, but keep that inverted S here to lower the contrast. And there we've got our vintage image. The great thing about this technique is that this is all completely non-destructive. We can hide these adjustment layers and the texture layer and even hide the blur. And we're back to our original image. And furthermore, because it's a smart object, remember we can double click and access our raw data and make changes to the raw data itself. For example, we could bump the exposure up here even a little bit more and bring up the shadows and open them up just a bit. We click on OK and that raw data is updated. We turn our filters back on, we turn our layers back on, and we've got our updated image. So there you have a few steps in which you can take a modern day image and give it a vintage look. We've added some blur, we've created the tonal variations with hue saturation or gradient map, we've reduced the contrast with curves, and we've added some textures with an extra layer at the top set to soft light blend mode. I hope you'll try this out on your own pictures and have a good time with it. Thanks for watching.